the next day at work, Angel comes up to me and she's like, hey, have you noticed anything like unusual around the house? And I'm like, no, because usually that means like, you know, paranormal stuff. Or... Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, but like I have been having like this experience and I just like kind of recapped what I you know told you to her. And she was like, oh, OK, that makes sense. Like, once it couldn't feed on you, it came over and, like, started trying to feed off of me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, Mm -mm. last night I was in bed, and I see, like, these yellow teeth and claws just going, like, over her bed. And she's like, oh, fuck no. And she kicks that out, right? And so that night, I'm, you know, chilling in the apartment with her. I'm like, hey, is that thing still around? And, like, she kind of shows me how to go around room by room, you know, close eyes. And, like, imagine the room getting brighter and brighter until we find the gray spots in the room. And then, like, we start pushing those out. And we go room by room. And we're, like, you know, every other room, you know, I'll say, like, okay, this is what I see. And then the next room, she's, like, okay, this is what I see. So we're, like, constantly confirming for each other. Let's talk not physical, not physical. Let's talk not physical. Let's talk not physical. Let us have some spirit talk. Some spirit talk, let us have some spirit talk. Oh. Morning, guys. Is evaluating Claudio's floor. No, it's the idea is that certain textures, colors can stir your visual uh, field. So, what do you think, uh, Michael? Do you see anything with this background? Well, I'm seeing a lot of the, I'm seeing the lighting, the, you know. Um, but you see, it has a lot of noise, but the noise is, um, is not too granular. So, so this is the type of surface that works for me. I can make a lot of different surfaces of different textures. So we can experiment with that one time. But, for example, um, but, do you see my mouse? Yeah, I see your mouse. This area, in this area, I'm seeing text right now. In this area. Are you seeing text from the image itself or are you seeing text superimposed on top? No, the background helps me channel with the, this noise here. I think I can I, I can also see here, but it's easier for me in this this part. Okay. Because maybe because it's too light here. Yeah, I don't see much of anything. But you see it has it has noise, but it's like a homogeneous noise. See, what I'm seeing is, uh, oh, you can't see my mouse, but I can actually see the letter S, H, all in the floor. So I'm really good at pareidolia, where you see stuff within the textures. Well, maybe we can do it some other day. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the link. What well, is the TM? Let me see. The way I got here was. Yeah. By going here, the nonphysical.com slash TM for telepathic meditation. And then I created, the, I just created this photo backgrounds. I, I, I only put one. Later on, maybe I'll, I'll add a, a selector. It's a Rorschach test. No, I'm joking. I, I know what you're talking about. It, we're trying it, to get... it works better for with that pattern. It look it works better than just plain gray. Let me see with this one. Show um show the one with the uh, where there's big letters. That, that yeah, seems... that's the one that is good for somebody that starts from scratch. Yeah, I am, and that's like me. Wow, uh, you're not a, uh, you're level I am two. Still, huh? I am so you're still not level one. <laughs> so which one do you like? Any, just pick, uh, we can start with an O. L? Cool. No, O. Well. Oh, I thought you were a loser. Yeah, no, L is fine too. <laughs> L for Lee. O? Oh, yeah, they always, yeah. oneness, right? Yeah. Or the all-seeing O. <laughs> Oh, I forgot that I had to move the mouse. Yeah. 
Do you see enough? Let me know when to move the mouse. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I see yeah. a donut. Do you yeah, see, a, see a chocolate, the, uh, chocolate donut, right? It disappeared already. <laughs> it's going to come back, I pray. I, I've been practicing visualizations for a long time. Maybe like more than 20 years, like I think roughly like 25 years. Nice. Since like the 2000, close to 2000. Um, and well, so many things happen from there to now. Um, lately, I've been seeing like text for maybe five years and uh, with the eyes closed, but then I started improving with eyes open. And now in certain, when I look at certain surfaces, I can see text with eyes open. And when I found some certain texture, certain surfaces, I take pictures. So then, then I try with the picture. Okay. So lately it worked on my floor. And for the first time I saw letters very big. And I, I was it, it was stable, so I, I could measure. I just keep looking at it. They were like about one inch. Okay. The size of the letter. So it was cool. You, know, you can see big words. I mean, words like one inch tall. And my, my goal, well, Michael knows, my goal is to to channel to really get messages by using the the text. Okay, so so it would be like a, a text channeling instead of audio or pseudo audio. Spiritual teleprompter. Yeah, ah. instead of like Jane Roberts, that was probably. Well, Is there something like um, DMT activation to do that? Or so I know a lot of people who take DMT have seen like the codes of the universe more or less. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, DMT alters the, your brain, I think, and my gen, my help generate stuff. But I don't, I don't play, I didn't play much with any stuff like that. I noticed that when I eat mushrooms, mm -hmm. I tend to get better visuals, and also when I don't consume much sugar. If, that makes if, I, if I if I'm a week, I, I get a lot of sugar the whole week or two weeks. Then I, I think the colors, I don't see many colors. Um, but I was telling Michael that I was. I was having like two weeks with very low sugar. And then the last three days I I ate some cookies. I finished the cookies, so now I'm with very low sugar again. Um, mm -hmm. I still was able to to visualize pretty well. So I, I guess that you have to keep uh, your body to a minimum. So if you if you are a long time with a minimum, you can have some sugars, but so so Michael is going to stop uh, all the sugars, right? Yeah, never. <laughs> Come on, do it for the community. Yeah, do it for the uh, so. Unlike Claudio, I have zero. I mean, I have almost zero visualization skills. Um, but I, but I have been working on my mental telepathy, like, um, like where I can hear, like, like if you listen to your inner dialogue, I can tell, like, when somebody else is coming through. Usually, it's in spirit. But um, so that part has been developing, and I notice, like, like for example. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are like this. They can hear music and, you know, you can play a song in your head and you can hear the song. Whereas Claudia finds that more struggling. So it's almost like we have like nat like natural abilities to begin with and we can enhance those. But I want to be able to expand my visualization because I I'd like to be able to see things too. But I feel like I'm starting from like square one. OK. Well. <clears throat> I mean, like I said, we can always do some psychic games to help increase that, I guess. Yeah, well, we do various things. I mean, I'm not, as I mentioned yesterday, it, like I'm not so much interested in 
validating or but I, I think what we can gain from is um is I think the more you exercise those muscles, like the more you just get more data coming in. Yeah. And we have to and so like like the letter thing that Claudia just showed you, you know, there's a certain part of our brain that creates after images, but it turns out you can sort of piggyback off that and mm -hmm. keep the after image going even after it normally would go away. And so it's like you're it's like you're slowly building up the ability to visualize that way. So. But like so when you were saying about the games, is that like the telepathy or visualization that you were developing? I mean, you could do either both. Okay. I mean. Because. With. Some of the games that I'm thinking of, it's basically like either <clears throat> you're passing a construct or you're passing an image, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so one person's just working on projection. And that would be like visualization, like making your visualization concrete enough to be able for it to be read by the other person. Okay. And then the other person would be working on their receiving abilities. Okay, that makes sense. So, so, so have we, you tried that? Well, we could try that, but yeah, so what we've done is, I, I mentioned this yesterday, that like where one person is doing the, their visualization and then describing what they're visualizing and everybody else has their eyes closed and they're kind of like trying to keep up. Keep up. And, okay. and what we found was that sometimes people actually pick up on things that the other person is doing, even though they didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Like they'll say, I see a, you know, an animal, and it's like, and then somebody else will chime in, isn't it a purple animal? And it's like, yeah, it is a purple animal, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Word. Uh, so uh, all these things are interrelated. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was uh, when I, I don't know, did I mention I mean going on that hike the other day? Uh, yesterday. Yeah. I. <laughs> You were that's right. You were sitting down and, and trying to send images to other people. Yeah. yeah, it was me and another guy on top of this uh, mountaintop mm -hmm. and we were doing past the construct where we take like our energy, move it outside of our body, form it into a 3D shape and then pass it to the next person. Mm -hmm. And then they would have to like figure out what it is. And like I was trying to make like a, a tetrahedron at mm -hmm. one point. And like I, I initially started with like a sphere and then like I molded it into that shape and then like I could I was having trouble getting like that one side to like close and like form an actual like edge. Mm -hmm. So the other guy came back and he was like, yeah, it kind of looked like a fortune cookie. And I'm like, you know what? That makes sense because that's the energy flow of what was going on inside of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, this reminds me of another thing that Claudia and I have been working on is if we, if we say, hey, I'm going to send you a message and then see if you can pick up on it later on. Yeah. We haven't been successful yet, but I but I have like a certain image in my mind that I send them when I'm meditating. He hasn't picked up on it yet, but that's OK. But yeah, that sounds that sounds like, correct. I mean, it sounds images. like a fortune cookie. That's exactly what how a fortune cookie is made. It's literally swooshed together to close it up. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so, it's, it's not a bad idea to mentally create a fortune cookie and somebody else would break it and see what oh, the text inside. Right? The <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Robert Monroe calls it a rope. You know, I don't know if you remember if you guys remember that, but it's this idea that someone sends you this thing and in your experience, let's say you're projecting or lucid dreaming, and then when you wake up, um, excuse me, you're able to unpack the message that the person sent you, which seemed at the time like a ball of light or something. So it might not even have had any shape or form to begin with, but you're able to decode it later. Um, I never completely understood that, but hey, maybe we'll figure it out. So wait, you're trying to send a message and it comes across as a wall of light? Well, you... no, I'm saying that that when Robert Monroe used to get messages from spirits, they didn't always just talk to him. Sometimes they would just send him 
a ball of light. And then later on, he would remember. He, it was almost like he was able to unpack the information. Okay. That was in that that light. And so it's it is a lot like the light codes concept too, because it's like a trans. It's, it's you know it's transfer of information, transformation. You know, it could be tr um, transfer of a source code or you know some sort of code. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities. But it's but I think a lot of it is just I think the more we practice these things, the more the better we can get. I it's been it I think for us a, a brand new skill, it can be very um you have to be really patient because it's it you know it's kind of like like um for people that you know are practicing out of body experiences in the beginning, it can be very frustrating. You spend, you know, you every day you lay in bed, you do the exercise and nothing happens. And at some point you're like, oh, well, I just can't do it. Or, oh, people making it up. And I think it's, I think the, I think you get in life what you uh, put the, what you're willing to put the effort in. You know? Yeah. Now, I wanted to mention though, also you said about that you, I was telling Claudia about how you have uh, quote unquote friends <laughs> that you want to see. As part oh of yeah, you talking about hypno? Yeah, yeah. So uh, here I'll show you what I have set up. So, so I, I live with a fourth dimensional frog creature uh, apparently, and um, he he visits me at night. Like he'll like I'll be laying in bed, and then I'll feel like a f -f thump at the end of my bed, and then he'll like crawl over and sit on my legs. And so eventually I set, let's see, there we go. This guy up, I found that statue, bought that. I figured that had to belong to hip now. And um, yeah, now I've got my little little frog area set up. That's his space. But yeah, I've only physically seen him once and I only saw him as a shadow. Uh, like I was sitting watching TV we're playing a video game or something and I, I heard a noise underneath my tv and i look underneath my tv stand and there's a shadow about like let's see about like yay big and it was like kind of like the size of a small rabbit is what i thought at the time turns out it was a small frog person <laughs> um but yeah just moved backwards into the shadows and like i saw it move into the shadows as a separate shadow and then it just vanished so yeah, I don't know. Uh, and so, do you get any other messages or something from from it, like dreams or? Not really. I mean, the most communication we get is like usually when he shows up at night, and it's just a lot of like it feels physical. It's it's not like uh, I don't get any words or messages or images. I just feel him around. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I've gotten any like direct messages from him per se. Maybe aside from like when I have used my spirit box app on my phone, you know, like the one that changes channels and shit. Um, I, I've occasionally had that on when some weird stuff has gone on around like my apartment if it's happened during the day and I've gotten some chatter from him that way. Like the one time I was playing my video game uh, Monster Hunter, and I just see this little black box on my shelf, just kind of whoop, like go off of the shelf, like it moved on its own accord, just you know, dropped. Mm. And I'm like, well, that's there's nothing that could have caused that. That's been sitting there for months and months, not having moved. Like there's no possible way. Um, and so I turn on my Ghost Box app, and you know, I, like I just plug it into my my charger and let it sit there so it stays on and I'm playing my game. And after a while, you know, I I hear some chatter and I'm like, oh, hey, Hibna, what's going on? And then like eventually uh, I hear him say like, oh, what's he do? And I'm like, oh, he must be talking about what's going on on my TV. Like, so I start describing like the video game to this like spiritual entity. 
And I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm like hunting monsters and like, you know, you kill them and you like carve off pieces of them to go get bigger and better items and, you know, hunt bigger monsters. And then like shortly after that, I remember I got hit in the game and like basically tossed aside in, in like this one, like, uh, like by the monster. And uh, on the ghost box app, I just hear him say like, get him. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll get back into the fight. All right. But so, so what yeah. do you feel? You felt something like uh, moving your your hand. How how was it? So it feels um, like you know how like when a cat jumps up on the end of your bed. Like, well, I don't know, have a cat, but I imagine yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it feels like that. It feels like a cat jumping up on the end of your bed, and then like you can feel it taking steps across the bed. And then it'll, it'll settle on my on my calves because that's where I told it like you know that's where I feel comfortable with you. If you just lay on my legs, I know it's you. You know what I mean? I have a speculation regarding what's going on with you. Uh, and even if it's not the case, it might be in the future. In the future, that you feel a presence, right? Sometimes. So. That presence might have nothing to do with the image of the frog. But uh, let's let's say it's a being in the non-physical, maybe somebody that knows you from the past. Um, it could it, be. It, it, um, it, it, the, huh? the only reason, the only indication that I have that it is a frog person is from talking with the other people in the, in the group that we're a part of. Um, there's someone that has a, a daughter who's being trained by a shaman. And I guess they had their daughter look into it a few times for me. And they came back saying that it was a uh, two to three foot tall frog person wearing a yellow kimono. So that's the only reason that I know that that's what it's supposed to be. Right. So whatever you have in mind, somebody that wants to in somehow get close to you or connect to you. Okay. I'm gonna try to show images that you you will feel like expected. Okay. Because I mean, imagine if it shows something else like a like a pink pig. Maybe it's gonna be a little bit weird, right? But but by knowing what you have in mind, they might have to they might try to do something that you feel more in tune to. So what, what you can try is maybe in the future to try to tell that whatever it is uh, to reveal the, the who, who, who it is. I mean, who or, or what it is. OK, because even even another case that is possible is that you got some connection, let's say. Uh, maybe it is an entity that identifies with that shape. But even if that's the case, another entity that uh, cares about you still might use that image to connect to you as a start. Okay. I don't know, that's a speculation I have. Yeah, there's a lot of potential what ifs in this in this scenario for sure. <clears throat> um, here, let me show you something. This is the art that they did of the frog. Nice. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear very well. You did that art or, or who did that? Oh, um, that's the person that uh, looked in on it for me. Oh, so, Daniel. Is that Daniel? Daniel yeah, Daniel is the guest of ours, so, so she's all, she knows us. So and can you visualize that shape? Have you practiced visualizing that frog? Like that face, or I mean, I I haven't really thought to focus on specifically that. I guess I've just kind of like anytime he's shown up, I've just tried to be in as a receptive state as I can be to try to like get any information out of like what's happening. I, I've tried to like basically like go into it with just being like, oh, I guess this is him. Like, let's see what we can do. You know, kind of mentality. You know, like let's see. What this yeah, time. because because uh, I don't know if you have you heard about Seth, uh, the Egyptian god of 
chaos, you know, but also is an entity that was channeled by Jane Roberts. Oh, okay. Uh, you don't hear from Jane Roberts. Uh, uh, the first book was called, I think, Seth Speaks, right? Or Okay, yes. I think it was Seth Speaks. Well, there's Speaks. many books, but yeah, this was back the in first the late one. 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Okay. Um, that an entity can use symbols. So, so in, anyway, uh, related to what stuff I said before, you can use the symbol of the frog to like, like a, a way to kind of kind of like a, a phone number. So when you think when you try to think of the frog, whatever it is, that entity is going to relate to that symbol. So then it's gonna you're gonna get the attention of that particular entity. Okay, it's, it's, it's like a, re, a relation, a relationship. Signal. Signal. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it, it might be practical. Because, for example, let's suppose you 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 because, for example, I when I try to let's say connect. By the way, my parents are on the other side. But in my case, with my parents, I use some instance instance of my life with them, and I and I visualize them. When I, I have the advantage that I can see the faces when they were when like in from pictures on or what I remember when they were alive. Uh, and also in a situation, for example, with my father. I remember when it was very cold in winter and I was going to to practice uh, athletics. I was running and sometimes the, the day was very cold in the morning. And he used to like, get close to me and and I felt warm. Sometimes he was grabbing my hand and put it on, on his jacket, his eye jacket. Um, that that's the kind of image I use to try to connect with him. I, I just choose uh, uh, something uh, that was important in my life, and the same with my mom. So any 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 symbol, any anything anything that you can use to connect to some particular entity is like uh, dial the number to connect to that particular entity. So, so I think it can be useful. I mean, that image that you have for the frog can be useful to to keep trying to identify the connection with some particular entity. That makes sense. Kind of like uh, I remember listening to. I don't know if you're familiar with Bashar at all. I remember him talking about like, you know, if you wanted to contact him or something. Or like his people or or whatever. I think they he was like, oh yeah, if you imagine like, I don't quote me on the exact iconography, but I think it was something along the lines of like, yeah, if you picture like a greenish blue triangle on a black background, like you know, with you know something around it or whatever. Like he's like, yeah, that'll basically like bring you to my people kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Like you know, you're basically just. Like you said, it's it's just like you're using a code, like it's a phone number. You know what I mean? Right. Like, exactly. Yeah. As an association. Yeah. <clears throat> or like when I do Reiki and I look at um, like a picture of somebody that I'm doing Reiki on before I, I'm working on them and like connect to them through that and the Reiki sigils. You know, so that makes sense. Yeah. Actually, when you started talking about the frog, I I didn't connect that well. But when I saw the image, uh, it changed my perspective of that, and I think it's a cool, a cool image because it was <laughs> it was like a Buddha, right? Or it was in a position like oh, the statue, yeah, the, the statue's statue. all like cross-legged, and it's it almost has like a, a robe on or something. Yeah, like I found that randomly in a gem shop after I got the uh, picture. Like I got the picture first. And I was like wandering around a gem shop at one point and saw like there was like one frog like that. There's just just the one statue like that in the entire shop. And I'm like, that belongs to Hypno. And I had to buy it. And I was like, that's you know, it was only like 25 bucks or something like that. 25. <laughs> but yeah. I I can't relate to um, to nature spirits that these days, but when I was a kid. Every time I would wake up, not every time, but a lot of times I would wake up from dreams very slowly and there would be a leprechaun in my bed. 
and he would start ticking on me and laughing hysterically. And there'd be hearts all over the wall. And so, so it's kind of like we have these these um, these beings that kind of help us along in our spiritual development. And I'm sure in your case, it kind of opens your eyes or and it makes you want to learn more to find out who this person is. It's you know, um, I, if I had a guess, I would say it's a, it's one of your personalities. I mean, it's probably that. You know, or or somebody or a friend. <laughs> yeah. So, well, you, you know, know what? Somebody it's, that knows, that it's funny. knows you better than you remember. I actually showed the the image of that frog that Danielle drew, uh, that she painted or whatever, like however she created it. I yeah. I showed that to one of my old friends, um, who, like, I used to live with in my early twenties, and you know, he used to get some you know, questionable things on online, off the dark web and whatever. And uh, anyway, he was talking to me about like the frog and he was like, hey, uh, have you ever asked Danielle like if, if uh, that is like one of the psychedelic frogs? And I'm like, I hadn't thought of that, but that's a really good question. Like, cause you know, like I've had some psychedelic experiences and such like that and I've, I've had a DMT experience where I saw the future and that's a whole story in and of itself. But yeah, I, I like, I looked up like the picture of like what the frog was that he was talking about. Cause he gave me like the scientific name for it and like compared it to like the coloration on the frog in the photo that Danielle did. And I'm like, that's like eerily similar. So like I sent it to Danielle and I'm like, Hey, is this like the same type of frog that, that Hypno is? And they basically came back with like, yeah, it's very probable that that's the same species. Like, so. So yeah. just for reference, there's there's a certain, I guess, poisons or something that that produced by certain toads that can yes. produce psychedelic experiences. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, apparently so Red, uh, um, can you tell tell us more about um, your experiences? If you practice visualization before, if you had uh, lucid dreams or out of body astral projection, what uh, kind of, what you kind want, of you want to know what my paranormal expertise is and like what experiences I've had. Well, basically, because I want to see where you are um, uh, for for uh, to start practicing something. So first, I want to know what, what kind of uh, experience you had experiences you had and if you practice uh, visualizing stuff well uh so my background is more or less um i like i i have divorced parents and my mom uh eventually started dating this guy named bill and we lived on like this farmhouse and it was a haunted farmhouse it was like built in the 1700s in like you know Lidditz, pennsylvania and um <clears throat> i don't know i had all these like weird experiences like you know just around the house like hearing weird noises or like you know little things that were like you know semi unexplainable kind of thing like i remember like going down you know, into the kitchen to go on my way to the, like the garage to get something for breakfast or something. And like going along, closing all of like the door, like the cupboards in the kitchen to keep them closed. Cause I, you know, there was like an OCD thing in my brain where it's like, they all need to be closed. So like I would close all of them and they were all like cupboards that you had to like push a button to open. And like, you know, I never really thought much of that, but like later on, my mom told me like, you know, cause her room was right above that room. Like she would hear the cupboards opening and closing late at night and she'd be like, Mary, it's time to go to bed, you know, because that was my late step step grandma that passed away in our house and like the cupboards would stop, you know, and I was like, oh, OK, that explains why they were always open in the morning. We just had ghosts going through our cupboards, <laughs> not liking the way things were arranged or something, you know, and um, so, I mean, there's a lot of little experiences like that, you know, growing up, um, but, you know, I had this one. Um, point in middle school where I was like, you know, maybe not the most popular person I kind of considered myself to be like being picked on at certain points or whatever. And um, so I don't know, I went online and like looked up 
various like how to's on you know magic and psionics and that sort of thing and eventually i found this website called scipog.net uh which was it stood for psychic students in pursuit of guidance and like they had some articles on there for how to's and then they also had like um there was like an irc chat room that they hosted where the, there was like one room that was just the general chat and then there was like another room that was off of that room that you could get to that was like the practice room or like if you wanted to practice psychic abilities you would go into that chat room you'd find somebody to like you know play an online psychic game with and then you would you know play a game and then you know basically figure out what you guys uh like what was visualized, what was like sent, like, you know, what was actually received and that sort of thing and figure out where the commonalities were. Um, and like we would play games like, uh, you know, pass the construct like I was describing earlier or guess the fruit where it's just a telepathy game. You're just thinking of a fruit and you send it out and like they got to try to guess like what it is and, um, you know, use different visualization techniques or even like, you know, thinking about even the flavor or like, you know, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, no, it was just like a lot of it, like little games like that in an arc chat room and growing up in a haunted farmhouse and moving out to California and then eventually moving into like a haunted apartment and having experiences <laughs> there and uh, moving into now this room where I have, you know, like by run-ins with my little frog guy. But yeah, um, uh, let's see. There was like one incident where I remember we were like there's like five of us in the kitchen and i remember uh seeing movement out of the corner of my eye and as i look over the closest thing to the movement was five feet away it was chris you know this five to six foot tall dude and he's like stark white looking in the direction of where i saw the movement he's like somebody else tell me that they just saw that too and i'm like i'm pretty sure i did but tell me what i saw because i only saw it out of my peripheral and he's like, the lid of the sugar jar just picked itself up and moved itself three feet down the counter. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I saw too. Like, that makes sense. But I, like, didn't see how it started, <laughs> you know? Like, so, mm. yeah, so a lot of incidences like that. Um, had an incident where living in an apartment with, like, uh, another coworker of mine, uh, that apartment was really haunted. And there was, like, some, like dark entity that eventually found its way into our apartment and started feeding off of me while I was there and we had to get rid of that. So mm. that was a whole thing. Um, yeah. And like, I think I, I actually physically saw two ghosts at that apartment, but I like mentally saw a few as well. And I actually was able to pick up on like seeing the thing that was like feeding off of us and like figured out how to be able to kick it out. So there's that whole thing, and I can tell you that whole story if you want me to get into that too. But well, maybe we can do it some other time. I don't know how long it is. Oh, okay. it's not too long. I mean, how how long do you think it will take? Um, the demon story, demon story would probably take. I don't know. I could probably tell it maybe ten minutes or so, maybe fifteen. Well, yeah, you can go ahead then. <laughs> okay. Um. So. Living in this apartment, it was me and this person named Angel. Uh, when I first moved in, uh, well, before I moved in, they told me that they talked to their spirits through music and such. And like the first song that came on when I was like moving in to their apartment, uh, like I heard it playing really loudly on their music. And, you know, it was like, welcome to my house. And I'm just like, well, that's. That's a little weird. That's a little on the nose. Angel, did you put that on? And she's like, no, this is on shuffle. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, yeah, I guess the ghosts are welcoming you, you know? And um, <laughs> like that night, I remember taking like a water bottle and putting it on my shelf uh, in my closet, like my, my walk-in closet. And like, as I took my hand back, I see my reflection in the glass. And then I see like someone like yay tall compared to, compared to me, like come up behind me and they have like long dark hair. And I turn around, they're not there. I look look down the hallway and Angel and her cat are like in their room on their bed, like haven't moved in a while. And I'm like, all right, you know. So mm. that was like the start of the spookiness in that apartment. But more or less what happened was 
there was a point where Angel ended up moving. Uh, well, she didn't move. She went to visit her husband in another state for about a week. And this was during like the week of Christmas, more or less. And I, you know, I'm pretty prone to seasonal depression. So anyway, I'm alone in an apartment. You know, like it's pretty dark most of the time because like there's not really good natural lighting in that place. And, um, you know, I start getting more and more depressed. And then like, you know, she comes back and like, you know, I'm still feeling the depression and such. And what's weird is like, I was feeling it a lot whenever I would like uh, get a shower and such, which is weird for me because usually I feel better when I get a shower, you know, but like I was feeling, like weirdly depressed when I would get in the shower. And, you know, after some time, the weather eventually broke and like the sky became clear and I was like, the fuck am i doing like i you know i don't need to be stuck in this rut like like i am like this is so dumb of me like i i have no reason to be this depressed you know like the sun is out it's beautiful like i can i can be okay and then like the next day at work angel comes up to me and she's like hey have you noticed anything like unusual around the house and i'm like no because usually that means like you know paranormal stuff or Mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, but like, I have been having like this experience and I just like kind of recapped what I, you know, told you to her. And she was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like once it couldn't feed on you, it came over and like started trying to feed off of me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, Mm -hmm. last night I was in bed and I see like these yellow teeth and claws just going like over her bed. And she's like, oh, fuck no. And she kicks that out. Right. And so that night, I'm, you know, chilling in the apartment with her. I'm like, hey, is that thing still around? And, like, she kind of shows me how to go around room by room, you know, close eyes and, like, imagine the room getting brighter and brighter until we find the gray spots in the room. And then, like, we start pushing those out and we go room by room and we're like, you know, every other room, you know, I'll say, like, okay, this is what I see. And then the next room, she's like, okay, this is what I see. So we're, like, constantly confirming for each other like what we're seeing that was a good a good technique yeah yeah it was definitely a good way to do that um because it definitely built my confidence and you know made me realize like okay i'm seeing more than what i realize you know so we go through room by room and like you know we're, we're pushing stuff out and we get to my room and then like we get to like the bathroom that's beside my room and she steps into the bathroom and she's like whoa and i'm like what and she's like all right stand here now here now here and she has me keep stepping between my bedroom and like the bathroom and i'm like oh wow it's like really dense in there and she's like yeah this is where he's been hanging out and i'm like oh that makes sense why i've been feeling depressed in the shower now (laughs) like Mm. he's been preying on me whenever i'm in my bathroom you know so we push him out of the bathroom uh we like have like another half bath to go through and then we like her the last room we have is her bedroom And I remember walking into the bedroom and like in my mind's eye, like I have my eyes closed, I'm looking in her bedroom and I just see what looks like Smeagol hunched over on her bed, all like, (sighs) you know, like hissing at us. Yeah. And that's like the mental image I have in my head. I'm like, wow, that was, that was pretty strong, like a strong visual image. And then like, you know, after I like think that Angel's like, do you see him like hunched over on my bed, hissing like Smeagol? And I'm like, wow that's two on the nose let's go (laughs) and she's like all right let's push him out so we push him out and as we're pushing him out i just like have this visualization of him like clawing onto things like no no (sighs) you know like trying not to be pushed out you know kind of thing and again she reconfirmed that that was like a thing that we actually saw and i'm like oh shit you know like that was really eye-opening for me so what she saw was similar to what you saw yes Wow. Yeah, it was like almost exactly what I saw. And then like eventually she moved out and I had different friends move in and those friends went away for a weekend and I was in the shower and then I started feeling depressed and I'm like I recognize this pattern and I like close my eyes and I just see like the yellow teeth and claws going mm-hmm. and I'm just like oh hey or, oh Chewy you're back because we called him Chewy. Uh, And I was like, fuck you. And I trapped him in a bubble and like I threw him outside and I never had to deal with him again after that, uh, fortunately. But yeah, Uh, there was still stuff seen in that apartment afterwards. But yeah. So. 
so, so yeah, that, uh, that was good. I mean, you were able to handle it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, once I knew what was going on and I knew that I had the ability to, I mean, it was it was pretty easy, way easier than I thought. Anyway. So yeah, I, I wanna I wanna show you read um, a picture that I'm gonna share this my screen that I used. Um, let me see. Do you see the picture? Yeah. OK, this, this is a, um, the, a kind of visualization that I can easily get. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but the pattern is that there is an area in the top that is lighter than the area at the bottom. See the, this? This area is darker than this one. It, yeah, you don't you don't need to see a lot of stars that this picture, but it gives you an idea that is a lighter area. And there is a darker area and the lighter area is the sky. Th this is very typical when you when you watch something at night. Uh, yeah, that the light tends to be lighter than than the trees or mountains or hills that you have. It, there is an option also to see like water at the bottom, but these are these are the type of visualizations that I, I can easily start and I, I was able to do from the beginning. That whatever I see an area that is lighter. I relate the darker area below that. As some trees or mountains. And, and this help helps me start with something basic to visualize It's like the most basic thing. And, and if I see also something lighter at the bottom, I can make it usually water. You can also have this in green too, and, and like another area with green. But the, but these are the type of uh, visualizations that, for me, was the the, the easiest of, of all. I, I started uh, visualizing. Let me go back to close this. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, th th that, that's the type of uh, visualization that I can relate when I close my eyes. You see right now, for example, I well, maybe because I just saw that picture, I'm seeing already some stars and I see trees. I don't see it exactly like that picture. I see it more like, uh, I mean, longer in the in the horizontal axis, uh, I, I'm kind of like seeing like a highest ratio, like maybe more than nine to sixteen. Um, well, I I can now see other stuff like lightning, some green stuff here and there, but um, that's the type of thing that to me is like the basic. Uh, and I was having conversations with Michael that. It would be nice if uh, you can find your basic. Maybe it's, it might be the same as mine that you might see lighter areas and then you relate the lighter areas to the sky. And then feel free, feel free not to force the imagery to be a particular way. Because for example, right now, I see the area of the land, they say, very very narrow. I see the, the sky is super big. So it doesn't matter as long as there is a, a differentiation be, between a top and bottom. You can make. Uh, well, also it has to be lighter at the top and then you make that uh, the sky, the, the lighter area, the sky. So uh, and from there on also another thing I do is once I get an image like that with a sky. In my case, because I practice also a lot. I move, I move forward. So when I move forward, I see changes and I, and I keep moving forward. And I usually convert that with uh, two areas that are higher in the sides, left and right. And it's, it's kind of like uh, a canyon, a uh, separation between mountains, or it can be a road. But it's uh, typical that I go forward and I also can feel like I'm flying. 
you can add the, the feeling of flying. Um, the, this technique I use to get visualizations very fast, especially when I when I don't get them that easy. When I add the motion, I get variation. And, and with the variation, I, I have more to play with. It's like a painter that suddenly has a lot of colors to play with. And the motion helps me in that. So, so I just want to comment that for me, I found that single objects, like um, almost like toys and visualizing a single object and then just working almost kind of like geometric shapes and stuff like that is like where I've been able to get my most success so far is just, it's almost like when I close my eyes, I only see like a little part of the field. Um, and so I just work with what I, what I got. Um, but I think Claudio's method is good because in some ways it utilizes a larger part of the field and it's got a built in three dimensionality to it, which I think is is really in the long run. You want to have like the full three dimensional full field. So that makes sense. I'm kind yeah. of used to constructs. And stuff too, so I, I, I want to tell you another trick that I used to. I, I think I told you, Michael, sometimes you don't see a lot, but you see, for example, uh, like a little star. Uh, like a little light. So I focus on that. So it's like I focus on the distinction from the from the screen, let's say the screen of my mind. Um, I focus on that and I start with a very small area and I don't care much about what's going on on, on the sides. And then I usually convert that to a small rectangle. And then I, I get some scenery in that small rectangle. And once I get a, a decent quality in the small rectangle, I then exp expand the rectangle. So that, that's another trick I use that, that I focus when I, when I have trouble getting something nice, I focus on a small area. I try to make that small area neat, see some changes. Sometimes, most of the times I, I see like a sky in that small area, some something lighter at the top. But other times I see like symbols, like graphs. Um, and sometimes when I start like that, I see graphs and then I convert the graphs to letters and I can get into like a, a text channel. OK, like and then I start seeing. So I, I go with the flow. It's easy to whatever surprises you, welcome it. Because for example, I, I, I'm seeing trees, I'm seeing water. Those are very easy for me. But then suddenly something appears like a, a flying dragon. I, I focus on the dragon, I forget about the rest. I, whatever surprises me, I follow it. I try to focus on that. And, so you can get any type of surprise. Sometimes I get cartoon stuff. I get art. I get any. I mean, yesterday I was practicing. I was seeing like huge alien ships, um, and there were a lot of. It was like a movie. Like you see so many things there, and I was trying to figure out. I was trying to get closer, zooming in. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what does each part do. Yeah, uh, and and it was very complex. So. Anything can surprises you at some point, and I think it's good to to go with the flow. Whatever surprises you, stay there. Yeah, those are some some advice. That makes sense. What about you, Michael? What kind of tricks work for you? Well, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm like at a tiny fraction of your skill set, but but I agree with you. Um, you know, it's. I feel like as I've been working on it, it's almost like I have to do it almost every day. And and but the the um the, the concept I want to portray though is this idea that what Claudio feels like he's connecting into, he calls it source. Um, it's like it's like connecting to an internet um, or like a browser that you can then put in a prompt and say, please give me an image of blank. And then it poof, that image shows up. Or, you know, I think what Claudia would like to be able to do is say, please give me the answer to this question. 
you know, or something like that. So, so it's almost like we have this um, computer screen inside of us that that if we develop it, it's almost like we have this like a, it's like we have like a Google search page, you know, within our within our minds and 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 harnessing that. Um, yeah, it's kind of like accessing the Akashic records more or less. Yeah, yeah, yes. that's, that's that's one term that people use. Well, I also going to give you the the end, the other end of the of the scope, um, and that's why at some point I decided to call it telepathic meditation. Is because my mind doesn't at some point doesn't operate in a normal way. It, it operates in a something that is intuitive, like um, and and I get a lot of stuff in one shot, instantaneous. For example, I'm in a forest and suddenly I decide to bring flowers and I get a lot of flowers and the flowers are distributed. Like, for example, in, in different areas, like in a mountain and in some trees on the right in on the left, but in one shot without me trying exactly that. But but the general thought about bringing some flowers and then once because once you get into an area, let's say, you get easier similar stuff because once you get like like uh, yellow flowers then you can bring blue flowers you can bring other plants and then a lot of plants can come in one shot and also you get like the intuition like like i'm the motion helps a lot too because the motion it, it makes you the changes faster makes the changes faster um in the motion i I kind of like receive an internal thought, but I don't even know what it is. It's like an intuitive thought. And then that thought appears in the scenery. And then it's something else like, uh, so it, you, you start uh, experiencing something that is not the typical way you think. Well, that will happen to me. It started happening at some point and so then then you feel like more powerful because you you start operating in a in a way that is not the normal way of thinking so everything is dynamic everything is fast super fast okay uh, it's almost but, like, but that's, uh, that's, like that's a, i didn't like say that art. about that before because i don't know if you guys are going to reach that very soon but but that's the type of thing that can come ahead and, and i think you have to welcome that that Whatever is weird and happens instantaneous, just welcome it. Just go with the with the flow. Recently, I had a lucid dream or or an astral projection where I was at a pretty high astral plane, and there was these trees, and they didn't have any leaves on them. And when I would look at a portion of the tree, suddenly a bunch of pink flowers would just instantly pop up. And then I would look at another portion of the tree, and a bunch of flowers popped in. Nice. So it's like um, it's like an art program. Right where you hit, you know, paste, 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 and it just so there's like a lot of things going on. This is why Claudio thinks that, that there's a non-physical aspect to this because it's like there's things that that go that are going on that just defy like how a brain would work. Like the brain couldn't do all this. Like it's okay. yeah. I was telling like, I was telling Michael that sometimes what works for me is not the typical way you would think of. Because, for example, sometimes I start with a scenery that is uh, mainly nature, but then I, I, I have a thought about I want to see something like a city. And then it might happen that suddenly I, I'm in the middle of a city and I see in one shot a lot of houses and buildings and maybe even cars. Sometimes everything can come in one shot full of stuff, even with people walking. So, so that's another thing you have to, it's, it's better if you feel confident that when something surprises you like that, just welcome it. Don't, don't feel, oh my God, what's going on? Like I, I didn't suddenly want so much, but I mean, you get used to feel confident and welcome that super rich experience that you get suddenly out of the sudden. So it is weird that if I want to build a house from scratch, it might take me a long time, but I, I can see the, the house already built in one shot. 
you see, it's kind of like more like uh, that's why we relate to AI because it's like prompting a, a, an AI house. Give me a house with, I don't know, 10 windows and you get a house with 10 windows instead of uh, trying to build the house. But for example, it is usually more difficult for me to build a house from from branches of trees, like in an island. If I want to do that and I actually practice that, I I can see a lot of branches, right? And then I move the branches, kind of like uh, move them together to build the house that way from from branches. But I move a lot of branches in one shot. It's not like I move one and then the other one. I think it's more difficult for me to to go build the, the, uh, like a tree house branch by branch. If I want to do one, two, I could, I could practice that. I might also succeed, but it's more difficult when I do it one by one. It's easier if I bring a lot of branches lot in one of shot. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense because like I was saying with uh, when I was doing past the construct on the mountaintop with my friend, if I had just gone directly to like a tetrahedron instead of starting with a spheroid and then molding it that way, maybe he probably would have seen it more as a tetrahedron, you know? Because, yeah, again, you're right. It's it's kind of hard taking something and changing it and doing it piece by piece sometimes. So, yeah, I really, yeah. I, that makes sense. Yeah. I, when I at different times I've done something where even though I'm not like seeing it in my front field of vision, um, like I would just start just start go, going off on objects and say, okay, I want to see a pencil. Okay, great, I see a pencil. I want to see a mouse. It's like it's like we have this uh, like a catalog. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the was it Danielle that was talking about color forms? Yesterday, but but yeah, it's like the, exactly. the it's this idea that yeah we have this whole catalog of stuff just all ready to go, um, and and I'm wondering like when Claudio is saying that he suddenly in a city and everything is going on, it's like I'm wondering if he's almost like traveling, like he's almost like mentally traveling into a pre-created space um, that's been Pretty bustling awesome. before he even stepped in, but now that he's observing it. Um, yes, sometimes the difficult part is to start, but once you start, it's, it's easy for me to keep it. Once I get into a city, I can stay in the city maybe for an hour, and I can go move uh, through the streets, and I can and I, I can also pretend I'm driving a car and, and turn right and left. Yeah. I, I, another thing that I recommend is to practice two things. Once, to keep the scenery stable because at the beginning I, for several years i i couldn't help but having the scenery change i couldn't I, and i don't know when i started but i started also successfully to freeze a screen i mean to keep it frozen so like a screenshot I don't do it that often, and I'm not always successful, but uh, a lot of times uh, I can do it. But but what I'm pretty successful is to make it almost uh, frozen, like very stable with some little things moving here and there. But like, I mean, 90%, let's say, stable. So one is to practice the stable, trying to uh, make it stable, and another practice is the opposite to completely make a diversity so something that is boring try to make it and for that i use some other tricks that i told michael i try to shake the scenery i try to see okay I, I don't want this i mean uh, give me something else like start from scratch like uh, shake the skin sometimes i do like um like a vortex okay. uh, and, and I move uh, so that way everything changes and suddenly I get something more interesting. So uh, so an idea just a thought just came to me. Um, there's actually a non spiritual small group of people like on Reddit. Um, they call themselves like cure aphantasia. But it's this concept that you know how like art some artists like they they can see everything in their mind's eye and then they can paint it or whatever. And then there's other people like me 
who who are like, I don't know what a face looks like, you know? And so I think for me, it's almost like I'm tapping into a part of myself that I didn't even realize I had. But looking back, I know I have it because when I dream, I have no problem seeing things, right? So if the dream state, if you're able to see things perfectly fine in a dream state, really it's just a matter of tapping into that part of your brain that that was always able to see things just fine. That's that's the way I perceive it. Yeah. Oh, related to dreams, I told Michael that sometimes even in my dreams I practice on the visualization. <laughs> I remember practicing in, in, in a dream. Uh, and it's very similar. How how are how is your dreaming? I mean, are you able to remember your dreams, Brad, or what's your what's your it's not often? Honestly, um, I used to a lot more when I was younger, for sure. Um, I definitely remember having a few dreams when I was in high school where I would start to realize it was a dream. But as soon as I would start to realize it was a dream, the entire dream would start to shake. And then like I'd have to be like, nope, nope, it's OK. We're not in a dream. We're not in a dream. And then I would just fall fully asleep. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I get this. I, I become lucid a lot, but sometimes like I'll see my grandmother who would be over 100 now if she were still alive and it, the dream just goes, it's like an explosion, <laughs> but I'm able to stay asleep. But it's just funny because it's like dreams don't like to be mistrusted. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Like, I mean, speaking of which, I remember having a dream where I saw. Um, I remember seeing a wall. And then it was a very low wall, like only up to your waist or so. And then like it was all made of brick, like small, well, more stone than brick. But like across the wall was like my deceased grandma. And I just remember being like, how are you here? This doesn't make any sense. And just being like all crying and hugging them. Yeah. And, and they're all like, wait, wait, but I have something to tell you. And I, I was just like beside myself with emotions and such. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, ah, fuck it, fine, okay. And then she just like, you know, hugged me and shit. And she was like, yeah, it's okay, it's fine. You know, and like, I never got the message because I was just like, so glad she was there. <laughs> it was so dumb and frustrating. And I wake she, she up. She was going to tell like, you to oh, buy Bitcoin. <laughs> she was going to tell you to buy Bitcoin back when it was a uh, dollar of Bitcoin. <laughs> God, I wish. No, actually, that happens like, sometime within the past three or four years so it wouldn't have been no i know I'm, I'm just joking but yeah yeah but maybe it was dogecoin though <laughs> yeah yeah that would have been it that would have been it yeah yeah so yeah it's just funny um yeah so the thing yeah so for me dreaming is something i'm really good at so it's like that's what i sort of build off of are you into like art or anything like that i know you do you know, you or you, you, you it says like on your thing like digital creation is that right or am I? Oh yeah, that was from back in high school and such. Like I was a lot, I was really into it in high school and, and such because I actually had, you know, access to the tools and such to do all of that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I did some like Photoshop and stuff like that. But um, oh. yeah, I mean, I haven't had the ability to really create like I used to back then or anything. Um, the last thing that I actually created was uh, I, was when I was at an anime convention and I was trying to drum up business for my massage uh, stuff. So I uh, basically took the, the female Titan from Attack on Titan and I, I sketched them out because I'm pretty familiar with muscle structure being the massage therapist. Mm -hmm. And I, I, had it, I had it say like Attack on Tightness instead of Attack on <laughs> And I was like, yeah, ask about local mobile massage at the bottom and, you know, had my card sitting next to it and such. So That's so funny. But yeah, that uh, is yeah, one of my biggest sins is I am eternally all these muscles here are eternally like locked. I'm surprised that they didn't just die from overexertion all these years. I don't know. Well, but I, I guess when you get patients do. Um, it's like the same clientele, like it's like you loose them up and then a week later they're it's like everything is just right back to where it started. Yeah, it, well, I mean, yeah, because everyone falls back into the same patterns and habits. Yeah. You know? Uh like so, so what's my the so what's the preventative thing? I mean, let's say it's kind of like toothbrushing. So you give them a full cleaning, you know, or a full loosening. 
how what's the recommended procedure for avoiding to retighten? You know? Um, I mean, yoga, doing lots of stretching, okay. um, getting getting into your own knots and such, um, getting yourself a theracane, which looks like hold on, I got one here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Oh. One of these guys. Oh my god, what is that looks like a torture device. Okay. Pretty much. Um so like these knobs I'll put uh -huh. on either side of my like neck on on the either side of my spine. Uh -huh. And I'll kind of go up and down my neck like so. Oh my god. And really get into the muscle that way. Uh oh, that felt great. Is or that I'll, what I'll take like this what, end for a knot for someone oh, yeah. yeah. for somebody who doesn't know what he's doing and I buy one of those things, am I at risk of hurting myself or is it because that looks pretty uh pretty high heavy duty? Not really. I mean it's it's like a back scratcher for knots, you know? Mm -hmm. You just take one of the, the nodes, find whatever right. knot you're, you're, you you want to get like uh give attention to, like plug in and just kind of like Put some pressure in there, like maybe yeah. like bounce a little bit on with this yeah. end, or like just roll over it a little wow. bit. And that is really it up. I, Amazon just got a, you know, like a you have a, one of those uh, like affiliate that. links. So I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> oh, like just uh, what, what are, cool the so cane, so like therapy cane. They're like you can find them for like sixteen to twenty six bucks on online somewhere. What, what's your feeling about um, the vibrating things? The um, like these little they almost look like Dremels. You mean the Theragun? <laughs> not, <laughs> not that heavy duty, but yeah, it's 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 a vib it vibrates, right? Yeah. Oh my. See, this is where having a, a high speed camera could help. Oh my. God. I see. I see the loading. Oh my. Yeah, this thing's great. I love it. It feels good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if, guys, if we have time to try a little practice. Um, what, what, what uh, practice that work? Uh, I don't know if you had time to to watch the video I sent you, right? Uh, we do an exercise that somebody, uh, I mean, we, we can all close our eyes and Somebody is speaking what they see, um, and actually we say that if if you don't see anything, you can still speak using your imagination. That because sometimes when you speak, then you see it. Like for example, I, I'm not seeing anything, and I say, "Well, I, I see a tree and I see an apple." And actually, at the time that I'm talking and, and saying an apple, then the apple appears. So yeah. ideally would be that you see it first and then you speak. But if you don't, you can use your imagination and and say it. Um, and, I, and I want to focus on you, you guys. So maybe since Michael have done it before, I don't know if you, Michael, you want to start trying that. So, okay, that so he, he has an idea. Close my eyes and tell you what I'm seeing. And then yeah, remember the exercise we did with Arlindo that yeah. he was able to say a lot. He he had a great imagination and he he was. I'm usually uh, the worst. Yeah, but I can certainly start out and then and then we so can each go around and do our do do it and then and then see what we get. Okay. The, the goal in the exercise are we trying to like astral project into the same space no, it's not, it's not it's not that um it could be that way it could be that way but it but i think for now it's sort of like yeah it is it's 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 yeah it could be thought of that way but it's yeah it's just mainly it's almost like a guided meditation where one person is guiding via their own whatever they're perceiving it's rather than, you know, so, so for example, for me, for example, it's a problem because sometimes I won't pick up anything and I'll be like, I don't know what I'm saying, but then maybe you guys, because you're better, are already seeing something that I can't even see. <laughs> so, yeah, it also but, depends on, for me, it depends on the day. Sometimes I see a lot, sometimes, as, I mean, especially because it's not the same when I'm practicing alone, that when I am 
recording, you know, and sitting down, uh, it might not be exactly the same. So sometimes I might not see much, but then when I speak, I might, I might see it. But anyway, okay. I mean, Michael, it would be a good practice for you, even if you don't say much, because if, even if uh, if you stay silent, if you don't say anything, the other people can still keep practicing. And, was able to attack my neighbor. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right. Well, anyways, I'll wait on that. All right. So let's now that I have that image in my mind, we can <laughs> we can see if that visualization works. No, I'm joking. So what are we what are, like what are we trying to like actually so, achieve? Are you trying to so remember one, one person will be describing what they're saying and everybody else will be just visualizing what what they're whatever they're visualizing, perhaps with some influence from what the person is saying. Is that is that right, Claudio? Okay. Do you want me to start? So yeah. am, I, am I understanding correctly that the people listening are trying to pick up on details that are not said? Yeah, you just you just you can you can uh, follow what the person is saying and and see what you see. Well, see what. Okay. Uh, but you can also you can also practice on your own. Let's say I mean, if something appears, because for example, let's say I'm I'm saying I, I'm in a, in a mount in an area with mountains, and I'm seeing a, a mountain lion lion. Uh, walking from the left so i might be talking about the mountain lion but you might see a bear you might see a bear there and, and if you see a bear i mean later on you wait till till the, the person finishes the story and then you talk about what you saw on top mm -hmm. of but but usually you're, you're going to tend to follow whoever is speaking you you tend to follow uh, the scenery. I mean, you imagine the scenery, and, and if if somebody start talking that they are walking in in a shopping mall, then you more likely are gonna follow something related to that. So, and then if the person talks about going to get some coffee, you you might see something else. Okay. But sometimes it happens that you get some connection that. For example, with Arlindo, he was talking about different galaxies. Uh, and he named the colors and I, I when I saw the colors, I guess the order of the colors. I mean, the, the colors were in the right order. The the four corners, I say the blue was here. That's how I saw it. I said, yeah, that's how I saw it, too. So you, you might get some some matches from hmm what the other person was imagining and what, what you got. But I think it's better this way because it might come accidentally instead of forcing, trying to, you know, exactly guess exactly what the other person thought. Yeah, it's not, it's, once again, though, it's not a test. It's more of like, it's more of, like if you were doing this by yourself, you would get what you get. But sometimes when other people talk and maybe other people are influencing our fields, maybe we get something more so so it's it's the added effect group effect we'll call it okay right. so yeah so i think it's better if either michael or me start do you want to start michael or do you want yeah, to I'll go ahead and start okay all right so the first thing that i'm seeing is sort of like that 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 massage cane that but it's not necessarily in the same shape it's basically like like a dark s shape but but like the cane, there's like little things like knobs, like on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the edges of the t of the points of the S, and then there's like maybe like a like like a rod coming out a part of the middle, um, and then um, as I had my eyes closed, it's like other shapes that had similar curves started to come into my view, um, like. That a minute ago, like I was seeing, like, a, and I can see it again now, like a banana, where you have like the banana peel, kind of about halfway down, and it's peeled in say three or four directions. Um, my color isn't very good, so it's like the banana part is like a little bit lighter, 
and the peel is a little bit darker. Um, but now it almost feels like I'm looking at corn. In other words, the banana straightened out. And, and now it looks like I'm looking at like a corn, uh, like a cob of corn that still has the leaves about halfway uh, peeled down. Um, it's funny because then when I mentioned the the leaves of the corn or the, the sheath, we'll call it, I started to get like a like a more detailed feeling about that with its thickness and the fact that it's green and it's got like the um, the spines in it, you know, like the, the, the hundreds of spines. Um, and I can even, a lot of times when I do visualization and even now because I'm talking, I can almost hear like the crinkliness of the of the um, sheath as 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 you play with it, you can hear like the crinkliness of it. Um, it's funny because now everything curved back into a banana, but then suddenly, instead of a banana, my mind went to a cashew. And now I'm seeing like a like a like a yellow brownish cashew that's also looks like a C, so it's like bent even further. Um, and, and now it's rotating a little bit so that it's forming like um, kind of like a like a like a semicircle arc. Um, like uh, like you know like they show rainbows but in, but instead of seeing all the colors of the rainbow i'm just seeing well at first i was just seeing the yellow part like the cashew of course now i'm mentioning rainbow and it's interesting for me i mean a rainbow would be like the holy grail but what i'm seeing is like a few colors it's like it's like a it's like a very very low uh low quality spectrum you know, where maybe I see a little bit of blue in a line and then a little bit of parallel red, maybe some parallel black. Boy, my rainbow is, is horrible. Um, OK, so what else am I picking up here? So you can see that as I was going through this whole thing, it was like my mind was was making associations from one shape to the next. Like right now, it's funny, the, the J shape comes back and I'm seeing like an umbrella. So I'm seeing the J shape of the handle of the umbrella, and then I'm seeing like the like the nearly fully open black um, umbrella um, covering portion. So it's like this little miniature umbrella. But then as I'm looking at the J of the umbrella, um, at least for a second there, I was thinking, hmm, this could also be like a like a trombone or something. But uh, it's still mostly an umbrella to me. An umbrella is moving around a little bit. One of the things that we that I've been trying to work on is moving, translating my shape. So not just having the shape and the view, and, but actually kind of getting it to go up and down. But it, it's kind of holding still. I mean, maybe as I move my my head, it feels like it's moving. But actually, it's almost like it's holding still, and my field of view is changing. If that makes any sense, it's like fixed in a relative or in an absolute position. Um, I think let's stop with that, but it, but it, but this was, I think, a good exercise for me in terms of seeing how um, how I was making sort of these associational references. We were starting with the the cane the, that I was looking at, the massage cane, and then how I turned it into a banana, a corn, how I turned it into an uh, the handle of an umbrella, cashew, rainbow. It's that's probably that's how my brain is working, at least that part of my brain. So. OK. OK, so red, what, what do you did? You want me to call to call you red? That's oh, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> so maybe you can tell us what you you have been experiencing while Michael was talking. Um. I mean, like I was just kind of focused on what objects he was talking about and like visualizing this specific object and that sort of thing. Um, like, I don't know, like nothing really kind of stuck out just from what he was describing, though. I was just kind of focusing on the object and changing it as he was talking about it. You, do you feel like it was in the, because uh, this is something, an issue I have. Like, do you feel like it was like you were imagining the object, or do you feel like you could actually see it when you were making it in your mind's eye? Um, 
it's it's kind of like i was like imagining it like creating it and then like you know yeah. focusing on what you were talking about and like seeing it after i created it kind of thing interesting okay well if you're done uh, let me tell you what i what i went through um <laughs> he met an angel um Anyway, I have a strong light right now, so that's why I think it's, yeah, I wasn't used to. Uh, so I, that's why I was playing with my fingers I, because it was too much light. Um, when you started um, with that device, what is the name of that thing? Hurricane. <laughs> yeah, cane. But what what is the first word? Thera, like therapy. Hurricane. Hey. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I I had I wasn't able to see it clearly. Uh, but then uh, when you when you change, for example, the umbrella was very easy. When I, when I saw the umbrella, the umbrella was flying around. Also, it was easy to see the banana and then turn into a corn. And the the rainbow. Well, in my case, I saw rainbow with more colors than you were saying. Um, and also when you mentioned the corn, I started seeing a lot of leaves. So uh, a lot of vegetation. But then when you change uh, to the umbrella or something else, then it was gone. So it was easy for me once I get into like a corn, because I, I, I visualize the corn and not only I saw the, the the yellow part, but I also saw the leaves. And once I started seeing the leaves around the corn, then a, a lot of leaves came. It's like I I call the leaves channel, and and, and a, a lot of leaves, and then trees on the side, and it's like the whole scenery started with some vegetation. Um, and then another thing that happened was that. And it happened in the past in other practices like this. At the beginning, I started seeing ice. Uh, and, I, and I got the connection that when I see these eyes, it's like some entities that are watching me, it's maybe guys, uh, friends in the non-physical, they are with me. It's like they are watching. So the, the symbol I get when they are watching is an eye. Um, also, when I saw eyes, sometimes I, I build the rest of the face. So I was also seeing some faces. Um, well, that's basically it. And then I was playing, you know, with the different lightings and getting, I also got stars. I remember the picture I put at the beginning. So I got something similar to that. Um, it's like I got stuck with that. So. Well, maybe I I, I want to go next, <laughs> so let's see, and then you can go last, right? So let's okay. see. I, I might I might play with my fingers to see because I'm not used to this type of lighting. Do you have your blindfold thing or your? Yeah, well, I don't know what I have. It it doesn't matter. I can okay. I can play with that. Actually, it's easy because I have control of the, of the lighting this way. Um, well, actually, I have a a circular lighting, so. I saw, I kept seeing the the circle, but now the circle turned into a, a moon, and I think now I'm seeing the Earth because I, I think it's related to, I was recently watching a video on YouTube that they were talking about pictures of the Earth taken from the moon. Um, going back to stars, a lot of stars and trees. It's like that that image got stuck in me. But now I seem more like a smaller area. And again, I see something huge like uh, a sun. But the sun actually is going down. And it's becoming like, uh, I mean, less less powerful light source. And it's like flying, kind of like a UFO. That now is gone, and I see a contour 
kind of like mountains with trees, but the shape is is a bit weird. It's like like a cliff. Um, and now I see like again the uh, light source on the on the back, and I saw like um, three pyramids. And now I see another building. It's a building that looks some kind of like the building of the Congress in DC. Oh well, suddenly I lost the city again. It was like a, a small city coming up, uh, but I lost it. So. Now I see like a, like plants in the back. I, I'm seeing mainly in that area in the middle that is like on top of a mountain. Let me change the lighting. Well, now I'm seeing kind of like a UFO on the left. I'm seeing like uh, galaxies now. And I'm seeing the number 60 in a, in like a cloud. I saw the number 60, 60. Now I'm seeing like a lake. I don't see a lot of uh, stuff anymore. Let me see. I'm seeing a face now. It's a young guy with a goatee. I see an eye again, so maybe they're watching me. And again, I'm coming back to the stars and uh, it's like uh, I got stuck with the stars and the mountains and trees. It's like I'm in that channel, I cannot, I mean, I bring, the, I keep bringing back that channel. But now I see more variety of trees. I mean, I see more of the, the leaves. I see the trees closer. No, oh, suddenly I see in the back like a, a gray, uh, an alien. So like an alien was watching. And I think I, I still feel the alien watching. I don't know if it means something. So like a gray alien watching. Yeah, somehow also the the topic of aliens and UFO is in my scenery. Like I just saw a, a, also a UFO moving from left to right. Well, I think I'm going to stop it. Well, one of you guys, uh, maybe tell, say what you, you were seeing. Well, I noticed that as you were just telling, descri um, describing different things or naming different objects, I was able to create like really low resolution stuff. Um, but it was just like, like 8 bit, you know, like an 8 bit game or something. Now, I mean, it wasn't pixely, but it was just, you know, it was dark or, you know, I, I, it just had like a general impression. But I was very happy, though, that I was able to produce things. They did seem to come almost instantaneously when you would mention it. But like, for example, when you mentioned Congress, um, like the building, I'm sorry, the cap, I guess they call it the Capitol. It's like all the pillars were like all over the place. I mean, they were all parallel, but it wasn't, it wasn't very ordered and structured. It was like I was struggling to create the object. Um, I had trouble imagining the sun or a bright object. Um, when you mentioned the UFO, I imagine like a sphere and then a ring around it. It's like I come up with like almost like geometric shortcuts 
to quickly think of something. But um, and the sense I got was that you were picking up a lot of, like you said, alien type things. And that's interesting. It's like, why do you do you normally get a lot of, of the imagery like that? Or is is that different than what you're normally picking up? No, sometimes. Well, yesterday I was seeing spaceships. <laughs> it was totally different. The type of quality I saw yesterday with the, the quality I saw right now. Right now I didn't see details. But yesterday was like a very lot of details. If you had to describe the quality of what you're seeing, I mean, like I'm, I can't even describe how bad the quality is, but, but you know, between HD and, and where I'm at, where would you say that, you know, like how much detail do you think these things have to you? Or is it suggestive or was it like, yeah, that's, I know what it you is. Mean right now? Well, yeah, I got, yeah, I got the best that. details in the trees, in the pyramids, in the building. Okay. Uh, in in the eyes because I I kept seeing eyes again. Okay. Not, not many this time. I saw more when you were talking. Mm -hmm. um, no, it wasn't my best, but I think it's, it has to do because I'm not used to this lighting I'm mm -hmm. recording right now. Yeah. Maybe I had to practice with the same lighting. Um, I mean, it usually it's not the same. Usually when I'm alone, more relaxed, I. I get more than when I am recording and You're having performances. But, I, but another reason is that we haven't done a practice for a long time, right? The last practice yeah. was what in October, maybe November. That was something actually um, when we worked with somebody before um, was this concept of it's like, well, you know, when I do my meditations, I sit quietly, I'm not talking. And meanwhile, here we're doing this interactively. And so it's like, you would think that maybe you wouldn't be able to achieve those altered states of consciousness when you're talking and when you're interacting with people, but but it seems like there, that's just a, a, a what do they call it a self-imposed limitation. Okay. And what about you, Red? When I was talking, what what were you experiencing? Um, I mean, there are certain points where I like kind of. Uh, lost focus and kind of like, I don't know. I have seen some of the things you were describing, but out of order. Like I saw the six and the zero before you mentioned it, and I saw like the sun. Oh, really? So maybe I got it from you then. I don't know. Maybe I think I saw the sun before. Yes, you I mentioned mean, why? why I was, I was wondering why do I get this sixteen? Yeah, well, because it started I off with 16. like initially I saw like when you were saying about the Earth, I saw the Earth, but I saw it in like it was like. Uh, like it was like a 2D and then it went like sideways and then it was like like a different layers and then like it went like back to like spherical and then like um I zoomed out and then there was like the sun and then like before you mentioned it going darker I noticed it going darker so mm -hmm. and and then I saw basically like from there it was like kind of like infinite sign you know between the sun and the earth and then that kind of like maybe changed into a number and i think that might have been where the, the 60 came in that's interesting yeah because yeah. that's the only the only thing i saw in text this time was that that 60 that's all six zero and, and the 60 was surrounded by a cloud and so he has like uh lighting it was it was like black uh, and it was a lighting and in the background i mean I, I saw mostly black background, but there might have been like a gradient in the background that I didn't really like pick up on, but like subconsciously. <clears throat> so, yeah, maybe. Well, well, what is left? Maybe now you can try. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm not not sure what I'm exactly the goal yeah, if, is. If you don't see much, just you can invent something. Okay. Uh, because also when like i said when you speak you might you might see it after you speak all right
I don't know, I'm not getting too much right now. Well, don't worry, even if you say nothing, we can still practice. All right. But you can also just imagine something and talk about whatever it comes to your mind. Well, maybe I'll talk a little bit about what, what I see in the meantime. I see a small area and I see like water and green. This time I see the green very, very intense. Uh, kind of like I'm, I'm inside a cave. And I see like a, the sun, I'm illuminating the grass and everything outside the cave. Well, I'm not going to keep talking. I, I want to wait till you say something. I don't know, it's just kind of static on that image now. I want to see what I've been observing is with the quiet, I'm able to focus on my clear audience and I hear these notes. It's, they sound like do, 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 like they kind of come in random intervals. I'm seeing like abstract shapes, like flowers, but they're they are very weird. They're like flowers by by some artist uh, that creates from from the fantasy. So like like flowers in a in a Disney movie, like a cartoon. Yeah, I'm seeing it's sort of like weird, weird shapes. Yeah, I'm seeing geometric stuff too, like um, spirals that are emanating, like. Um, yeah, like white spirals. Now I got a different angle, like I'm kind of like flying and, and seeing, like, like, I don't know how to describe it, to the left. Kind of like I'm in an airplane by turning slightly left. And I see a, a, some scenery like in Brazil, where you have these, these mountains or hills uh, full of vegetation, like very tropical. It's funny when you mention the mountains, the vegetation, I see that, but the mountains are like, like brown to me. Well, in my case, I, I see so much vegetation that actually I don't see the mountains. I know there has to be because of the different heights, but it's all, all vegetation. It's very, very tropical. I hope this means that one of you guys are going to travel to <laughs> some nice island. Or My sense is it's like picking up on on a past life or something.
I'm having trouble moving the screen like I used to. I mean, I'm able to move forward, but kind of slow. I keep seeing the mountains and stuff. Maybe that's another, another exercise we can try that we all of us can speak whatever we're seeing. It's like a mix of things. It's like a, we'll call it a uh, an astral zoom. Instead of only one speaking at a time, maybe the three of us can speak. Yeah. When, when somebody's not getting much, then the other one can bring something up. It's interesting. It reminds me of like in remote viewing. Um, sometimes, uh, like when they do the like when they want to they ask a question and then they ask two or three remote viewers to all make observations and then they collect all that data and they try to get a consensus of what it means. So we could we could pick a target, so to speak, where we Touch just pick up yeah. something. I don't know if you remember, but when we were practicing with Danielle, we were doing that, right? Because we, I don't know if she started talking when you were talking or, and then we, <laughs> we were I all think, talking. I think you interrupted her and uh, yeah, it started becoming like a shared adventure. So, so what would you say, Red? Was it, was, was it a completely uh, dark void or were you more, maybe you were thinking visually, maybe you were thinking more auditorily or in another way? What do you think? I don't know. Uh, I mean, when you guys were bringing stuff up, I would picture that, but that was about it. And then they would go back to dark eventually. How, how dark is your field? Because for me, like when I close my eyes, like it's not pitch black, but it's like, there's like no definable anything really i mean it's just it's like it's not quite television static but almost like that what would you say it's for you yeah i mean that's generally me too it's just kind of a lot of dark fuzziness yeah. right now i'm in the middle of like a, a volcano i'm i mean like in the bottom that just super high up there i see the sky but i am like at the bottom inside a volcano it must be the one in Hawaii that's going to be erupting soon. But it's very nice. Not a lot of cars, but very nice shapes. It can also be like another planet because it's very weird. See, this, this is what Clyde needs to do is, is learn how to become an artist so he can draw these crazy visualizations again. For me, I, I, can, I can get screenshots or record my, my... Yeah, I know. And you're picking up like other... You know, that's the thing that I always is that when I started doing this stuff, you know, when you see artists and the otherworldly things they come up with, it's like, where is that coming from? Right. It's like that must be like some major, it's, you know, uh, I want to call it spiritual. Do you get that impression, too, that that it's yeah, that I mean, I think there's artists that are just like way, way out there in terms of their their visual abilities. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Anyways, all right. Maybe we should uh, close up for tonight. Yep. But well, anyways, at least you got an idea of. Uh... Yeah, I, th I think it's not a bad idea if uh, sometimes we we can do the. Everybody can talk uh, whenever. And, and as I say, Claudia, sometimes in the silence, I get some of my clear audience. If, if people are, if I'm talking all the time or somebody else is talking, it's like I'm missing that part of my awareness. Yeah, okay. another thing that happens we, when we practice like this is that we, we might feel the pressure. For example, when I'm talking, I, I feel the pressure. Well, I had to better see something so I can tell these guys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I think that pressure goes against you. Yeah. And, uh, so, also, like I don't, I don't know. I've never really just sat and visualized for the sake of visualizing before. So, like, 
it's, it's not a normal practice for me like i don't know if i'm doing something like this it's usually like like i'm doing it for like a purpose or something and or like a goal or something and i think that makes it easier for me to come up with anything so it's, yeah for, for I me for you're saying it's it's i think for me in the last year it's like i've been trying to like allow myself to stop thinking and allow whatever to speak to me because i feel like i'm one of those people that i can just keep talking forever and i'm not really listening and so it's almost like i'm trying to develop my quote unquote listening skills so to speak where i'm letting you know um but i know what you're saying though it's like for you it's kind of like the world is a blank slate and and i'm the creator so i can if, if i want you know if i don't ask for anything it's just going to be empty but if i want to create something then i'll then i'll create it kind of yeah but how do you, do you practice meditation um i mean i i do but like i i don't really know I, i'm kind of like shooting in the dark with meditation i feel but um like i i don't know i've just i kind of put a bunch of random things together and try to do something but like it's not like i get anything out of meditation necessarily yet like i just am sitting here oming 35 or 33 times while like trying to visualize my field and feel the vibration within my body and that's pretty much it right now like so yeah i think in your case from what you were saying earlier i think it would be good to practice it um what while you're practicing your what you're doing like uh, reiki or or massaging uh, because maybe you can get like a, some after images after you done some session uh, if you have the chance because sometimes you might have to drive and unfortunately you but maybe at some point that that you can do it maybe try to remember the session and then you might you might get some extra stuff i mean for so, far, so far i don't really receive information like i can i can project and i can put out but like i have a real hard time receiving information unless like i'm like specifically looking for like a very specific answer or something <laughs> right what, like what you were saying that when i ask you <coughs> sorry <clears throat> that how do you know <clears throat> when you clean that chakra but you get something you get some feedback right that yeah that like I, I can, it's it's like I'm, it's almost like i'm looking at it because like i'm focusing like on something with the goal of like like i want to take <clears> what i know is already like right here and so basically i make that in my mind like i, I see their like spirit body in my mind because i've created in my mind and then i go into like the pool that is their chakra or should be their chakra and then like i start pulling like i'm my brain is like like it like magnetizes to the impurities and then like i pull that out and then like i just it's like i'm creating the image but i'm also kind of seeing it at the same time yeah the, but so you're also receiving so so it's like you're creating like a window a portal into that realm which you temporarily can see, and then when you're done, you just close up the portal and move on. It's not like you're, you know, it's haunting you in your dreams or something. <laughs> right. You know? That's interesting. Yeah, it's, and, it, and, and the reason, like, that I know that I'm done with the chakra is because it's like my, I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to be done with this within one or two breaths, and then, like, I make it so. Hmm. So... What do, you I don't think, know. what do you think is the purpose, not purpose, but you know, your, your friend, do you think, do you think they want you to be able to see them and interact with them? Or do you think it's more like, it's like almost like your pet right now, where it's just happy to be in your presence and. and oh, you mean hypno? Yeah, hypno, yeah. Um, wait, so what's the question about hypno again? Yeah, no, I mean, do you think that it wants to communicate with you or do you think that it, it's more like a pet where it just wants to be able to snuggle with you, so to speak, and, and, and call it a day? 
Well, I mean, the one time it like reached into my heart chakra and, and like I felt it palpate something in there and then I asked Danielle what was going on and she said that it was like trying to adjust my chakras for the upgrade. Um so like I think it it's got more than just pet level intelligence. No, I understand. Yeah, okay. But it's but it's almost kind of like it expects that, you know, it's going to be this sort of thing where you recognize its existence, it's helping you, but it's not like you know, here, like, like your grandmother, it's like, here's the secret to the universe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm not sure. I, you know, a lot of times when I do get help from spirit, when I'm in projecting and a spirit will come to me and provide something for me, it's not like they have anything to say to me. It's almost kind of like if I weren't aware that they were there, it would be probably just better. You know, they just do the thing and. Okay. Maybe your awareness of them is a glitch. In a way. Maybe. I don't know. I really don't know what to make of it right now. She got you. So and, and it's what you're describing too, man. So it's <laughs> so it's so there's it's a mix of the two, I would say. And certainly I also see it as like I just want to develop all of my powers, so to speak. Like all of okay. my soul level powers while I'm still physically here. I think that would be cool to of course, you don't want to develop it so much that that you know you can't drive because there's like twenty things overlooked <laughs> on your vision. But I can control it. I can I can see something when I drive lightly, and I keep it there, like a low level, no, because I don't want to increase it at the level of <laughs> you know interfering with. My... It's like police officer. I saw the car in front of me. I didn't know it wasn't a car. <laughs> By the way, um, I read, uh, maybe later I'll send you a link. Well, I sent you one, but there is another video we did with uh, practicing spherical vision. Okay. So, because it was interesting because, uh, and also in the same video, we have practice of motion, like trying to visualize, uh, for example, doing riding a bicycle so that then you kind of like move your astral body. Uh, I'm going to send you the link to that video. It's pretty good. Because uh, we, we noticed that we can imagine, and when we imagine, we, for example, if you, if I imagine wings from my back, that, that is like a spherical vision because I cannot see them normally. Because I, you can right. see like almost 180 degrees. But you can imagine the wings from your back, for example. I, I, I was practicing walking on the streets, um, and imagining ninjas behind me <laughs> doing doing ninjas like my bodyguard. So I was walking and I imagined the in in the back the 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 ninjas practicing and doing movements. And also sometimes, for example, walking um seeing surfers on the side and a little to the back. So there is a surfer here on the right and to the back and another one on the left. And then I can make them go from my back to the front and then go and turn around and go to the back. So that, that way you practice the three the 360 vision or spherical vision by, by having some motion that goes to your field and then back to where you can you cannot normally see. I mean behind behind your back. Okay. Anyway, so have a good one. Okay, you too. It was good uh, chatting with you Thanks. guys. And yeah, good to, good to meet you. Right? Yeah, it was good so meeting you guys. Yeah. Take care. <laughs>